What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Going to do a little Kenny Pickett game-winning drive breakdown against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, excited to break some of these plays down. I know there's been a lot of controversy on social media about, like, did he audible on the final touchdown to George Pickens? Going to break a lot of that stuff down. Going to go into some pass pro details because I think there's some confusion on that as well. But uh, just before we get started, please make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. Let's get to it. And just before we get into the game winning drive, specifically that uh, long touchdown to George Pickens, I wanted to kind of show you guys how Baltimore was playing the Steelers uh, on these third down situations. That way you all can get an understanding of uh, kind of how this game was unfolding and a little bit of the chess match back and forth between these two uh, units. So going to back this one up here. All you're going to get from Baltimore is like a variation of cover zero. They're going to be bringing kind of an exotic blitz look. They got six on the line of scrimmage. The Steelers have six in pass protection, but they're actually going to drop two interior defenders out and kind of uh, look to muddy up the middle of the field. There's no safety help over the top. Everybody's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Now, one thing that Pickett doesn't see here is the safety on the t at the top of the screen. He's actually capping this nickel defender, which is a good uh, blitz protection tell that that guy might be coming, right? So he misses that one. And you can see, um, you know, during his drop back, you know, we get some pretty quick pressure here. And even at the top of his drop, he's looking at the bottom of the screen to Connor Hayward on this option route. He's pretty well covered, especially once he goes to the middle with that interior rusher drop into the inside. Calvin Austin doesn't really create a ton of separation on Marlon Humphrey right here. And even by the time, you know, he gets out of his break, Kenny's already sacked. So I think the the best course of action here would probably be to read the top of the screen. Allen Robinson's running kind of this fin route with the slot fade from uh, George Pickens. That's probably your best hot answer, if I had to guess. Uh, but again, I'm not really – I think maybe Kenny thought he was, you know, a little more well protected here in the event of a blitz. I uh, thought he might have had a little bit more time. He was actually really lucky to hold on to this football. Uh, I was actually really surprised on the hit because you can tell that he's not anticipating it at all. He never once saw the nickel defender coming, um, and this is a pretty good shot. Uh, but an excellent job, you know, hanging on to that football with one hand. Uh, but this kind of sets the tone for what the Ravens were doing, and, and the Steelers eventually responded and took advantage of it. All right, so just one more example here before we get into the game-winning drive. The Ravens, third and seven, showing pressure, pre-snap. Uh, this look is a little bit different. We're getting a cover one, obvious cover one look. We got the safety in the middle of the field. Uh, the Steelers are going to be basically be running, um, you know, they're running some iteration of kind of three verticals here from the trip side. Um, what you're going to get here is Pickens is going to run this kind of crosser. You're going to get a stop route or a hinge from Allen Robinson, and then you're going to get a vertical route from Calvin Austin at the top of the screen. Once again, uh, the Ravens do bring some pressure here, and they have six people in protection for the six blitzers, um, but the ball doesn't get out on time. And I think that you could argue, you know, hey, the hot here, and this kind of goes to my own ideology here, but I don't love the hot option being a chipper. On an edge rusher, you see that the hot here is probably Connor Hayward, if I had to guess. Uh, he's chipping on Jandavion Clowney, trying to get the right tackle, a little bit of help. Now, this ball, you could make a very good case that, you know, there's some, definitely some interior pressure here. Worst case scenario, you know, you drop this at Connor Hayward's feet. Maybe if you hit him in stride, maybe he's able to get some yards after the catch and, you know, pick up this first down. I don't know. Kyle Hamilton's a pretty good player, so I think he probably gets a stop. But at the end of the day, at least don't take a sack to the point where, you know, you're you're kicking your team out of field goal range, right? Um, as far as the options and the secondary, you know, Austin does create a little bit of separation on the double move. But when you're hot like this, it's going to be really hard to, you know, hit that kind of throw, even with the middle of field safety, you know, not really being a factor in that decision. So, um, overall, you know, pretty good coverage. They do, they kind of slide underneath Pickens, um, and essentially get two sets of eyes on him on this crosser, which is, looks where Kenny, it looks like that's where Kenny's looking. Um, but overall, you know, the Ravens continue to be really aggressive. We talk all the time about shot play territory in between the forties, uh, for the offense, but defenses also get really aggressive in these situations for this particular reason. Sometimes you can force the quarterback into taking sacks that can take points off the board because you don't get the chance to kick a field goal. So the Ravens run a stunts. They did this all day, end up getting to Kenny, get another sack, but the Steelers learn from this. And I think that that's an encouraging, uh, thing moving forward. We'll hit on that on the game winner. All right, so now we're on to the game-winning drive. Uh, the Steelers are going to be running the exact same play we just went over uh, with kind of the same route combination, trips formation, three-by-one set. 
Uh, nice job from Kenny Pickett getting the ball out on time. We can go over this a little bit. You know, the Ravens once again on third down, third and long. They're showing a lot of bodies at the line of scrimmage. They're going to come with a little bit of pressure here. Going to drop two guys off the left uh, the left side of their defensive line out into coverage. But I really just – I really like the urgency here from Pickett, just knowing where to go with the football, being decisive. Um Looks like the Ravens are in some type of zone match coverage down here at the bottom. Nice job by Allen Robinson, understanding where he needs to be to settle into the void. But look at the anticipation from this throw. Just going to kind of slow this down a little bit. Um, does a nice job, you know, confirming where the safeties are at. Step into the throw. And this throw is, you know, it's out on time and on the money. He throws it good enough to where he's going to protect him from that cornerback that's kind of sinking off of his receiver to come over down and make that tackle. Just really like the understanding of, you know, whenever you're seeing pressure like this from a defensive coordinator, you the number one thing you have to understand as a quarterback is that you're going to get hit, right? And Kenny knows he's going to get hit here, still stays in the pocket and makes a really good throw on time for a big hookup um, in a big moment in the game too. So after picking up the first down, the Steelers are going to come out and empty here. Uh, 11 personnel, they're going to put Allen Robinson as the number two receiver uh, to the weak side of the formation. Empty's good because it gives the quarterback a lot of pre-snap tails, uh, helps them make quicker decisions, helps the ball come out uh, on time. But, you know, this is really – I highlighted this on Twitter too. This is really where the Steelers miss Deontay Johnson. Deontay's almost always lined up as the number two in these type of sets to the weak side. And the reason for that is you want to put your kind of quick hitter, the quick hitting receiver, uh, the guy who's good at se uh, creating separation – in these spots to win across the middle of the field. I mean, this is a matchup that the Steelers are really targeting. You know, you want your wide receiver lined up against the linebacker. I know Patrick Queen's a good athlete, but you want to make this dude cover. This is not what he's out there to do normally, uh, get a quick option route, and he's a e able to kind of come underneath this thing. Uh, Allen Robinson isn't able to create a lot of space for this ball to go to. So it's the right read, in my opinion. It's just not – enough separation uh, and that just really kind of speaks to what we've seen from Allen Robinson you know he can do some good things like we saw last play at creating um, advantages against zone coverage he understands defenses where he needs to be how to settle down in between defenders but at this point in his career he just doesn't really beat man coverage or win a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations anymore and that's kind of hurt them a little bit in situations particularly like this uh, to where you're kind of running this option route to the bottom of the screen and then kind of just a stick concept up to the top of the screen. Uh, this thing should be open, and if Deontay Johnson's in the game, this is a no contest first down and probably a big play. Um, so, you know, they hopefully will get Deontay back after the bye week, and you'll start to see some of this stuff, you know, hit for bigger plays. But, um, you know, unfortunately, just uh, incompletion there. So following the incompletion, uh, the Steelers are going to be running kind of a shallow cross concept, something that Canada calls a lot. Um, Pickett originally is going to kind of alert or look to alert the post against quarters. You got the split field safety look pre-snap. Uh, they do a good job kind of bottling this up, though. He moves quickly off of this um, just right to the check down. And I think that this is just showing um, as the course over the course of the game, as the game moved on, I think Pickett's internal clock started kind of getting more in sync with the offensive line. And he just started to take what the defense get, gave him. You know, in the second half, you saw these kind of dump offs to Jalen Warren in the flat, which is just really what Baltimore was giving them. You know, right here, you know, Patrick Queen makes this under call on the um, on the crosser from Allen Robinson underneath, but then he kind of falls asleep at the wheel and doesn't take up the number three receiver, which is the back. And you know, Marlon Humphrey, he's kind of in this side saddle position with his back to the sideline. This is just a free way to get six yards. You know, there's nothing wrong with going into third down on third and fourth situations because that's going to create a much cleaner look for the quarterback. It's going to limit some of the things that Baltimore can do in their disguises when you get into more manageable situations instead of always trying to live in third and nine, third and 10, third and 11. So now they get a third and manageable situation here. Again, the Ravens are showing a little bit of pre-snap pressure. You get a safety kind of rotating back deep to the middle of the field. Ravens are just playing what looks like cover three on this play. Uh, but, you know, the Steelers haven't been able to see, you know, a lot of teams are, you know, trying to keep the ball in front of them against them. They're not giving George Pickens these one-on-ones on the outside. Uh, but Baltimore was really aggressive on defense on Sunday. And I think for the most part, it worked until the end of the game. And, you know, eventually George Pickens just started taking over. And really, this is kind of more of the stuff that we saw last year from Pickett and Pickens. Uh, anytime that uh, Kenny was getting single high last year, 
and you get, you know, no safety help over the top, George Pickens one-on-one -on, -one on the boundary, uh, this ball's going in the sky. Like, he's going to throw a back shoulder to Pickens or he's going to lay it up over top. They're going to take these chances down the field because – just quite frankly, you know, Brandon Stevens is a really – I mean, he's a solid player. He's had a good year for Baltimore. He's long. Um, you know, he's physical. But Kenny knows that he's going to take this shot 100 times out of 100. And Pickens is going to come down with these type of plays more often than not. Uh, this The contested catch ability from 14 is just special. He's a dude, man. Um, the, just his body control, his ability to win in these situations is proven. Did it at Georgia, did it throughout his rookie year. Uh, so the the Ravens, they were comfortable leaving their guys one-on-one, -on -one, and, you know, Kenny did a good job making them pay. The Steelers actually gave Jalen Warren a carry on first down here. I don't think it gained any yards. It was like a one-yard gain. Uh, so we get a second long situation here. Again, Baltimore going to show some pressure, um, and then Kenny's is going to hit this game winner to George Pickens. Excellent throw, excellent route by Pickens to stack Marlon Humphrey. Uh, that's, you know, the Steelers' best weapon on the field against the Ravens' best cornerback. Um, and GP just wins, and that's that's really uh, the type of plays that you expect from your big-time playmakers uh, in the clutch. But I wanted to go over um, just a little bit of pass pro stuff because I see a lot of conversation about this play on Twitter. I think the audio from the broadcast, uh, you picked up some type of like Randy call with Pickett at the line of scrimmage. So he gets up here, he sees all these kind of bodies kind of rolling around. They're kind of walking around trying to disguise whatever it is they're trying to do. They're bringing pressure once again. But just look at the middle of the field, man. There is nobody back there. This is cover zero all the way. Uh, there's nobody that's going to be able to get back over top of George Pickens pre-snap. Uh, the Randy call that he makes at the line of scrimmage is really just um, – it's a pretty simple explanation. So Randy means like five, like a slide to the right for the offensive line. It's not an audible. It's a pass pro call. Randy means slide to the right. Now, if you get like a five-letter word, that usually means five-person slide to the right. So if you were to get a five-person slide to the left, the quarterback would go out there and say lucky. Or, you know, every team has different words, but that's pretty much what it means. If you get a three-letter word to the right, say you say red, that probably means three-person slide to the right. It's just the quarterback making change to protection. And all this does is make sure that Kenny understands where he's going to be protected from and where he's not going to be protected from. And you can tell that this is a five-person slide to the right because, A, you see all the offensive line slide to the right. But I also want to tell you guys a little bit about the drop itself, which I really appreciated from Pickett because I think it just shows a good understanding of um, – just the pass pro protection as a whole and how he was making adjustments on the fly to what Baltimore was giving him. So you see the five person slide to the right, you get um, Connor Hayward here and Jalen Warren are going to basically double team whoever's late to come off the edge here, but take a look at Pickett's drop. I really like Pickett's drop. A, the ball kind of comes out a little bit weird of Mason Cole, but you can tell he's going to the right anyway. And with the line sliding to the right, he knows he's going to be protected here. All his cleats in the ground. I mean, that's a – it's a beautiful ball. I mean, it literally hits George Pickens right in stride. Again, I want to go over a little bit about uh, Pickens' route itself, you know, getting press coverage. These are the type of moments that you pretty much dream of if you're a wide receiver. I mean, if uh, opposing defense is going to be willing to leave, you know, you one-on-one -on -one like that, you absolutely have to win. And he wins this pretty easily. Just a fade ball. This is what GP does. Does a good job creating that late separation. Gets this cornerback stacked. And another thing here that I really appreciate is the alignment of Pickens right here, like right outside the numbers. It gives him a little bit of space to work with. And also by him avoiding being pinned up against the sideline, it gives Pickett a really nice window to throw the football to where all he's got to do is just make sure he doesn't overthrow him, and then you're going to get a good play. So Baltimore got, you know, they got really aggressive, less than two minutes left in the game. You know, they're only up two at that point, so they're trying to knock them out of field goal range to prevent a loss. Um, and the Steelers, based on what they had seen before, you know, they fixed their protection issues. Kenny knows where to go with the football. And it's just a really nice play um, all around. Nice protection, awesome throw, awesome catch by Pickens. These are the type of moments, man, we talk about all week. Uh, Steelers, Ravens, you want to make a name for yourself. You want to endure yourself to, um, you know, the fan base. You make big-time plays in these type of games. And, you know, several guys stepped up in the clutch. Like I said, George Pickens, man, I think he's a dude. I think he's a dude. And the Steelers got a really good one out there on the outside. So, if you guys watch the video, I appreciate it. I'm trying to do something Kenny Pickett or offensive related at least once a week when I can, because uh, I know you guys are really interested in that type of stuff. 
uh, just please do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment on what you guys thought of the video, what you guys thought of the game. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. I will be back maybe tomorrow, Wednesday, going to do a little Broderick Jones film room. So if you guys are excited about that, let me know in the comments and I will holler at you guys next time. Peace and love.